hands up if you ever procrastinate. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm a writer and I work at home and it's so easy to find all sorts of stuff to do instead of getting to my desk. Like those tear-off calendars. Do you know the ones I mean? Each day there's a cartoon or a painting from the Met. In 2017, we had an On This Day in History calendar. It stood in the kitchen and was part of my morning procrastination routine. When the kids had left for school, I'd do the kitchen so I felt like I'd done something useful before I sat down to work. And I'd tear off a sheet and read about another historical event. Towards the end of February, I saw the first reference to a woman. I decided to keep the sheets that mentioned women as a little experiment. By the end of July, I had 20 out of 212. That's less than 10%. At this point, the experiment ended because I threw them all away in rage. <laughs> Not long afterwards, I was with Joe Bell and Tanya Hirschman. There they are wonderful writers and wonderful friends. I told them about the calendar, and they shared my rage. We all wanted to do something about it, and we decided to start a Twitter account. We'd call it On This Day She, and each day we'd post about the achievement of a woman or group of women from across the world and from all different time periods. We would change the world one tweet at a time, through all our excitement, a little voice in my head said, but what if you don't find enough women? I didn't tell Joe and Tanya. I was ashamed of this thought. I've considered myself a feminist, basically, forever. I know that women have been discriminated against throughout history and marginalized by the writing of history. When I was first at university, I supported a campaign to get more women writers onto the syllabus. I did an MA about medieval women at a time when that was a pretty new subject. But that was almost 30 years ago. Surely, if there were so many women to discover, I would know about them by now? And so, that voice. Had enough women really overcome all obstacles to make a mark on history? We were overwhelmed by what we found a cascade of names, ambitions, persistence, achievements in spite of prejudice, often against astonishing odds. Some women had overcome not only the obstacle of being born female, but also additional hurdles of poverty, of being women of colour in a state with structural racism. We decided we wouldn't only feature good or inspiring women, since, after all, there are many morally dubious men in history books. We would include women who had added to civilization and those who had committed atrocities. On the 27th of January, 2018, we began posting the tweets. Over the coming months, our readers asked again and again, why have I never heard of her? Sometimes we posted about women who were already familiar names because we discovered that what's been remembered about them is only part of their stories. Like Lucille Ball, ditzy redhead, right? Actually, also the first female CEO of a Hollywood production company and the person who made Star Trek happen. Or Josephine Baker, exotic dancer, also a prominent civil rights activist who was a courier for the French resistance. On our first birthday, on the very day, we were thrilled to reach 10,000 followers. By this time, on this day, she had already changed my life. Not because it quenched my rage. In fact, my rage increased and intensified. <laughs> As our research turned up more and more amazing women who'd done stuff in all areas, literature, philosophy, politics, mathematics, uh, engineering, astronomy, art, music, flying, swimming, boxing, everything, and had been forgotten. They included women who should be household names, like Scottish polymath Mary Somerville, the first person to be described as a scientist. French-Peruvian Flora Tristan, whose theory of socialism, the workers' union, 
was published five years before the Communist Manifesto. Polish nurse Irena Zendler, who saved 2,500 Jewish children from the Warsaw Ghetto. New Yorker Marie Van Britten Brown, who invented CCTV. And anesthesiologist Virginia Apgar, whose five-point method for assessing a newborn's health has saved countless lives worldwide. Why have we never heard of these women? It's not enough to say that they've been forgotten, as though that were an accident. The forgetting is too consistent and insistent to be accidental. But instead of speculating on the causes, let me show you an instance of this forgetting. This is one of a series of photographs taken at an archaeological dig on Orkney in 1929, showing Professor Gordon Child and his team. Historians had long puzzled over the presence of women in these photographs, finally concluding in several publications that they were tourists or visitors, apparently quite unable to see that in some of the photographs they're standing in the trench and that one of them is holding a trowel. <laughs> in fact, they're simply part of the team, just some of the many 1920s field archaeologists who happened to be female. History has failed to see women as workers, to see beyond their traditional roles to their hands and their brains, and so the memory of their achievements has been lost again and again. And so, again and again, women have had to reinvent the wheel of being seen as possessing equal potential to men. Maybe a woman invented the actual wheel. We'll never know. <laughs> we all remember some women, of course. Think of a woman scientist. Hands up if it was Marie Curie. Or a civil rights activist? Hands up if it was Rosa Parks. Recently, Ada Lovelace has been rediscovered. You know, that computer woman. The chances are high that these are the only women in these fields we can think of. We're so conditioned by tokenism to thinking of these women as exceptions that once we've found one, we don't expect to find any more. We use these women as an excuse to forget all the others. It's often taken a female historian to point out these emissions, to point out that what we call history is a very incomplete and therefore very inaccurate interpretation of the past. And it's the work of such historians that Tanya, Joe and I are drawing on for On This Day She. For example, our profile pic on Twitter is the Venus of Willendorf, one of the many female prehistoric figurines, long thought to have been made by men, now widely believed to have been made by women as self-portraits. Cave paintings up to 40,000 years old have been found to contain the stencils of women's as well as men's hands. On this day, she has shown me that throughout history, women have done all kinds of work. And there have always been women who've undertaken work, whether of experiment or self-expression, beyond what was necessary for physical survival. It's shown me that many, many women have engaged with the world in such a way as to change it. So, how did this change my life? Well, quite apart from the sheer joy of finding out about all these women, I no longer have to persuade myself to go and write my poems and my novel. And when I do sit down to write, I feel different. I used to feel like I was holding my breath underwater, like being a writer was diving into an alien element where I could only stay for a short time before coming up gasping. It made writing really exhausting. I'd always just thought this was my version of so-called imposter syndrome, you know, that fear that you're not qualified to do whatever it is that you're doing. And I just accepted it as part of the deal of wanting to write. But now I realized that that little voice in my head had been saying, who do you think you are? Why do you think you're so special? And where that voice used to be, there's now silence. Because now I know. 
I'm not special. I'm not implying by sitting down to write that I'm an exceptional woman. I'm just a woman doing what she's suited to, what she spent nine years at university for, and many years since practicing when she had the time and energy. You might say, I started to feel like a person. Simone de Beauvoir noticed that man is defined as a human being and woman as a female. Whenever a woman behaves like a human being, she is said to imitate the male. But I'm not imitating a man. I'm claiming the title of human being. I still find writing hard, but now I'm swimming on the surface. I still have a healthy amount of self-doubt about my work, but now I write before I do the kitchen. On this day, she has given me a self-belief and a feeling of entitlement I didn't have before. Seeing all these women is believing in myself. And some of our readers, the majority of whom are female, tell us that they are not only entertained by our tweets, but also empowered. Women continue to work in all areas, but the sense of certain activities being male is still widespread. This is Molly, who loves the space shirt she found in the boys' clothes section. She wants to be an astronaut, but what if that's only for boys too? It might help if she knew about these women. To help girls like Molly see their ambitions as normal, we have to make the history as well as the current reality of women's achievements common knowledge. That's our aim. We'll never run out of women for On This Day She. Women have left footprints all through history. And we're part of the effort to unearth these footprints and make sure that they're preserved. Make sure that history doesn't kick over the traces. We might make a book. We might make our own blooming calendar. <laughs> Worldwide, as well as making all the new humans and doing most of the childcare and domestic chores, women continue to do a great deal of other intellectual, emotional, and physical labor. We're not tourists or visitors. We work here, and we've always worked here. We at On This Day She hope for a time when there's no need for women's history, because history has had the women put back in. A time when women and girls can be seen and can see themselves in all their great variety and potential. A time when women are people. We've existed for 200,000 years. We've waited long enough.